Hello and welcome to an InView training video. We've got a lot of new users and a lot of people are asking about how do I take an insert and put it in a box? How do I have that insert be resizable? Those kind of things. So I thought we'd just go through and do um, kind of an exercise and that'll help you pretty much understand the inserts, resizable library, those kind of things a little bit better. So let's just go ahead and start. We'll go get a common box, actually one that we were playing with today earlier. We get a Fefco, let's just say 400. We'll scroll down and let's get this uh, first one here. Open it up in InView. And you can see we got our box. There we go. So you, when you start out, yeah, naturally, I mean, you get your 3D drawing, get your 2D drawing. And on this 2D drawing, you'll see we've got some you know, dimensions here. So let's say we want this to be six for the sake of argument. You got your box everything in here, but what we want this length, height, and width to kind of be global parameters so that we can use them in other places. So let's go ahead and we'll start with this one here and let's make global, make this one global and this one global. So as we make new drawings, these will be shared throughout the other drawings. So down here on the bottom, I'm going to right click and I'm going to do a new one up drawing. We'll just call it insert. Get to give it any name we want. Say OK. You'll see I get a nice blank canvas. And in here, I'm going to start with our Synergy components. So if I drew a regular like rectangle from our designs and stuff here, it wouldn't be resizable. I want, I want some item that's going to be resizable throughout my design. So let's take this three panel. And we're going to drag it out and pop it there. And you'll see we get some new parameters. X, Y, or X, Y, X1, X2, X3, X4 is kind of showing you where they're at and some dimensions. And if we uncheck this box, for example, in, in the expression here, we could give it our own variable name, but these variables don't already exist. So we'll go ahead and just use them. Say, okay, hit escape, that gets out of that tool. And let's go back over to our parameters. So now we've got our design that you can see. We got our parameters. I'm going to move this window over just a little bit. And let's just start filling some in. So if we click on here, you can see here's your X, your Y or whatever. So let's actually take X2 first and let's say we want that to be our length. So we're just going to put in L for that. And you'll see that this gets a lot bigger. Let's take our X4 here and let's make it our width. Put a W in there and you'll notice when I start typing, I get the variable that's available. Okay, so there's six and you can see there's 11 on that. And then these are the sides that we're gonna to wanna to fold down to kind of help us support our insert. So we'll make those the height and just in our case to make things easy, we'll do height divided by two, make this one height divided by two. All right, so let's just take a look and see what we got here real quick. Properties, oh, actually we'll go and make a 3D generate the 3D. And when we create a 3D, the first thing it's going to do is it's just going to bend up all the, any, any folds that were um, happening, they're just going to go to 90. So it's going to do all those automatically. So the other thing I'd like to do is um, I'd like to keep working on our insert a little bit. So let's put, we've got sides here. Let's put some uh, fold down sides on the other sides. So we'll go to Synergy Components. And this time we're going to get a individual component, a geometric shape and a rectangle. So if we look at this rectangle, for example, it's just going to be straight on line on the points, but we might want to make a correction for our material thickness. So when this folds in, so I'm going to use this one with a correction, drag it in and let's drag it out there. Okay. So you see, I have my shape in here and I start getting some snapping points and I want to snap it into this control point. So the way parametrics work, is these are control points that are adjustable. And now we've just added a new um, object that are anchored off those control points. We're just gonna use the, once again, these parameters as default, we'll drag in another object. And if you look at it, see this time it's, it's heading up in this up direction. We could um, mirror it, but we wanna go ahead and we can just also snap it and rotate it around. We're snapped into those control points, same thing we get our parameters. So let's go take a look at what we have on here. So this pH, if I zoom in a little bit, I'll zoom way in on this so you can kind of see it. So you can see here, I've got this correction here. 
that's in a little bit. So we're going to want to use our material thickness there. And then this is the length of that side. So in this case, same thing, we want it to be the height divided by two. And then on either side, this PC1 and PC2, we just want it to be our material thickness. So I'm going to use a special variable, D. And as you can see, I start to type, it says drawing name. In our case, we're just going to use the default. We'll do the same here. D, leaving it blank, just use the default drawing. And you'll notice now that this distance from here to here is 0.059. If we go look at our properties of our material, our current thickness is 0.059 inches. So if we change the material thickness, this is going to adjust with it. Let's zoom out. You can see the whole shape that we have now. I'll go back and look at our 3D. We've added those flaps on the side. So we could either go delete this drawing and let it regenerate it. In our case, it's pretty easy just to add these flaps to the current fold. So I, I clicked on both. I held control and clicked on the other, went down to fold. And now you can see I can fold them in some direction. We'll just move them to 90. And there you go. So we're going to put this insert in the box, but I'm actually wanting it to, to be on a different colored material. I'm going to keep it on the same material. So in our case, we'll go up here to File, Properties. We're going to say that materials, each drawing can use its own. Okay. And so now when I come in here and I right click, let's make our box and we'll say use own material and let's make it B flute white or not B flute. I'm going to use E flute. Same thing we're using white. All right. Okay. So now when I come back and look at my 3d presenter, I refresh because remember I resized my box earlier. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Let's uh, open our box up come down to about this step here and about right here is where we're going to want to stick that uh, insert in the box. Okay. So let's move out a little bit, maybe like so. So right here, I'm going to insert a step below. I'm going to insert another step below because one, I want to show my box and the next one, I want to maybe make it move into the box or something. So we have this 3d objects where we can import different 3d objects. And because we've already, our drawing has another 3d object, I want to drop this item in and I want to snap it to the back of this box. So I'm going to grab this side right here and I'm going to snap it right there. And so you can see that I'm now in the box, but actually you can kind of see that it's, it's coming through the edge. And so we, one of the things we needed to do when these edges fold down is we needed to account for the material thickness. So let's come back to our insert. And we remember we have our X um, length and our, you know, so we have our lengths, but this is our insert here. So let's come to this length here and let's subtract material thickness. Let's come to the width here. We're going to do the same. All right. And so now we come back and we refresh. You'll see that we're no longer hanging through the side. And if we actually want to even see it better, we've got some really cool different like solid, solid wire. I kind of like to look at this in transparent. And then you can kind of zoom real in and, you know, see where your different shapes are. Now we are upside down, so let's fix that. We'll click on our insert, double click here, and let's rotate the uh, object around. I could have just typed in 180, obviously. And then the other thing we can do is move it up and down in the box here. And so you'll see we've got some different items and how it's anchored. So we'll just move it to the bottom. If we needed to tweak it, we could. And we say, okay. All right, let's go back to our solid. Let's zoom out a little bit. And the insert probably isn't ideal. We want to put it in when we want to see it. But because if I come here and I go, let's say the first step, you can see it's stuck to that back wall. So if I play through my assembly, you know, not, not as pretty as what we'd want. So let's come back to our 3D part and let's make it not initially visible. We want to turn it on when we want to see it. And then let's raise it up some. So we'll just say like four inches. Say, okay. So now on the step five, let's go ahead and show that part. And then on step six here, we now have the ability to move it into the box. So you'll see this was that direction. That's not the direction we want to move it. Let's go to 90 degrees of that and see where we're going now. Okay, great. So I can snap on the four here. I could have typed in four, but anyway, we're now down into the box where we want to be. So when we go to play through this, it's going to be a little bit nicer um, setup. You'll see the box 
appear when we want it to appear, drop in, and then close up. Okay. All right. So now let's just continue to have some more fun with some parametrics. Let's uh, let's say in the middle of this insert, well, we want maybe some sort of cutout or something. So let's go grab a individual component and let's get a hole. And in our case, we want a hanging hole, okay? Because we want it to be anchored somewhere, but hang out in the middle of space. So we got this hanging hole centered. We see some parameters. Here's our control point. So we'll drag this out. I'm going to anchor it over here on one side, snap it. And then when I zoom out, I'm going to zoom in over here and I'm going to snap it there. So I get a new set of parameters. Once again, I'm pretty happy with these parameters. None are colliding. Say OK. Escape out of the last one. Let's zoom out a little bit. And let's see what parameters we have here. OK, so in our case, we picked a centered one. And so we're centered along this part of the box. But now we want to center this maybe up in the middle of here. So we've got this V O H parameter. And so if you re we remember, this is our X, our width. Let's go take some look at our parameters again. Let's say if we want to center the center of this, this is off the bottom. We're going to need to get the middle of this. And then we're going to get the middle of the box. So we know width is our X4. Let's take X4. X4, and we're going to divide it by 2, okay? So you'll see that kind of puts it at the center, but it's going to be high. So even at, let's make this a little bit so more obvious. Let's make, uh, what is it, HW and HL. So we'll make HL, let's say, 4, for example, and HW, 2. See, so it's not centered in the box. So we're going to also want to account for HW. So let's come down here, and we'll minus quantity of HW divided by 2. All right, so now we're centered, centered. Everything looks pretty good. So let's come back, refresh, and there's our cutout. So now we say, oh, let's go adjust the size of the box around it. So we can go look at our insert and say, eh, maybe we want it to be um, seven by six or five. I guess we were already five. All right, or four, no, no, whatever. OK, and so now you can see when we come back over here and refresh, now our whole box is based around that. Now, since these are all variables and you can work them in a number of different directions, the other thing we could go through is we could have said, hey, let's use this as our control. And then from here, we calculate a border and then we calculate the size of the box. And then that way, if you're creating a box with different size inserts and you always want it to change, you'll see it. And then let's just for fun, let's go change the height of the box. So let's make it like four inches or three inches. Okay. So now our box is a little bit thicker. We refresh and now you can see a little bit deeper. We're still half the height in there. And that's another thing that you could continue to play with, but notice everything changes. If you change material thicknesses, everything are going to change. So anyway, quick tutorial on how to put an insert in a box and make sure everything's resizable. Thanks for watching.